Hello data pros, welcome back to another exciting video in our DBT series. In our last video, we explored DBT packages and how they can be practically used in real-world projects. Now, let's take the next step and learn more about DBT materializations. Materializations are the ways to incorporate DBT models into target data warehouse. DBT offers five main types of materializations. They are view, table, ephemeral, incremental, and snapshot. While the first four types are conventional materializations, snapshots stand out due to their distinctive purpose. Snapshots are specifically designed to capture historical changes in data over time, catering to use cases like slowly changing dimension type 2 scenarios within DBT. As a result, the implementation of snapshots differs from other materialization. By default, DBT models are materialized as views. However, you can modify this default behavior using the materialized config parameter, which can be specified in either a YAML configuration file or directly within your model SQL file. If you followed our previous videos, you should already be familiar with the concepts of both view and table materializations. When a model is materialized as a table, every time the model is executed, the complete dataset is extracted from the source table or referenced model. The defined transformations are then applied as outlined in the model's SQL. Subsequently, a new table is generated in the target data warehouse. If the table already exists, it's dropped, recreated, and the data is reloaded to reflect the latest model run outcomes. Tables store their data directly on the underlying data platform storage disk, making them faster to access when queried by users or accessed by reporting tools. In contrast, with view materialization, no data is extracted from the source table or referenced model during model execution. Instead, the transformation logic specified in the model is converted into appropriate create view statements, resulting in the creation of a view in the target data warehouse. If the view already exists, it's dropped and recreated to reflect the latest model run outcomes. Unlike tables, views do not store their data in the underlying data warehouse disk. Instead, they serve as definitions layered on top of specific tables. Any transformation logic embedded within view definitions is executed only when users query data or when reports are executed or refreshed in your BI tool. Given these distinctions, it's recommended to materialize a particular model as a table if it involves heavy transformation logics or if you would need improved performance when querying data and running reports on top. However, for lightweight transformations, views are a suitable choice. They occupy no additional space on the data warehouse's storage, which can help reduce storage costs. Please refer to our initial videos in the same playlist for more information on these two materializations. Let's move on to ephemeral materialization. Consider this customer model that we've already built. It's currently being materialized as view in our data warehouse. Suppose our team now feels we should avoid flooding our data warehouse with unnecessary objects. However, we want to define this model within DBT's context for modularity and code reusability. In that case, we can just set the materialization as ephemeral. With ephemeral, no objects are created in the target data warehouse. DBT will just incorporate the code from this model into subsequent dependent models as a common table expression. The dependent models may get materialized either as a table or view, but the model that was materialized as ephemeral doesn't directly materialize as an object in the data warehouse. After setting up the ephemeral materialization for our customer stage model, let's now move forward and delete the existing object from the data warehouse. Returning to DBT, Execute the DBT model. As evident from the log, there were previously lines indicating the creation of the customer stage view. However, following the modification, these lines are now absent in the log. Also, as expected, there's no new object generated for the customer stage in the data warehouse. Furthermore, upon inspecting the compiled SQL of one of the successor or dependent models, 
we can observe that the customer stage is integrated as a common table expression. While the customer stage itself is not materialized within the data warehouse, its underlying logic is inherited by dependent models. Consequently, the dependent model is then materialized within the data warehouse. That's all I have for today. Please stay tuned for our next videos, where we'll deep dive into incremental and snapshot materializations. Please do like the video and subscribe to our channel. If you've any questions or thoughts, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.